This is Zion, Illinois. Once founded as a Christian utopia by a bitter opponent of Islam, it now serves as a testament to the truthfulness of Islam, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Messiah of the age. Let's turn back the pages of time as we observe God's support in favor of his Messiah and see what makes this town special and its brand new mosque so historic. Now go back in time, the faith that Dawi stood to annihilate. It will be a worldwide sign, countless newspapers around the world, advertising it. Who got he faced? We'll see the reaction of the media at that time and also look at how the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA is memorializing this mighty sign for the benefit of generations to come. We are not celebrating his death. What we are celebrating is the sign of God. The year is 1888. On the western shores of USA arrives a new face. His name is John Alexander Dowie, a Scottish-Australian evangelical minister who claims to be a faith healer. He was born in uh, Scotland in 1847. When he was young, he became a preacher. And he also claimed that he is able to heal the people those who believe in the atonement of Jesus. And then in 1888, when he was 41 years old, he arrived in uh, uh, San Francisco, California. And that's where he started his preaching in America. It won't be long before he turns his healing practice into a successful national business. From this point forward, his unbridled aspirations would only grow. And from Los Angeles, he took a train. And I went to see that uh, train station where he took the train in Pomona. He went to Chicago, Evansville, and then there he established church for himself, known as Christian Catholic Church. But the word Zion he was using from the very beginning. So he rented a house and he gave the name Zion Room to his rented house. He assembled people and at night he uncovered the blueprint or map of this vast city he is about to establish known as Zion. In this time, Dawi begins to accumulate large amounts of wealth, but he's not satisfied. Beguiled by his apparent success, he now sets his eyes on power. So he selected a city, uh, land, it was just a land over there, uh, more than 6,600 acres of land uh, next to the Michigan Lake. Important thing was that he had claimed the name of the city to be Zion, and he said that no sinful action would be done and only Christians would live in that land, in that city. And among the sinful actions were, uh, amazingly, drinking of the wine, which was very popular in America, and uh, smoking even, and things like that. So that's how Zion became very famous, and he established the city, and slowly and gradually started growing real fast. The city he founded began to flourish. By this time, he had his own publishing company, and printed a regular newspaper called the Leaves of Healing, and by means of which he was able to spread his messages across the entire world. Gathering all nations together under the banner of Zion, in this assembly of God's people, it is probable that more than 50 nations are represented. 
his beginning was in the name of God and he adopted healing or prayer as a weapon to attract people. But what went into his mind is beyond our scope. So Dawi is no ordinary priest. He's seen three continents. He's born in Scotland, then goes to Australia, comes back to Europe, then San Francisco, North America, then Chicago, also goes to Mexico. This man has lived over three continents. He owns millions of dollars. He boasts that he has 100,000 funders, not followers, people who can fund his campaign. He's only 50 years old, healthy, and he has a global influence. On a recent occasion in the city of Zion, I found there were 66 nations represented. This is no regular run-of-the-mill priest. This is a person who then, on top of all of that, claims to be Elijah. He claims a worldly success and then links it to divinity. He says, God speaks to me, and I'm the forerunner of the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is as big as it gets. He warned all the nations of uh, America and Europe that Islam is not a dead religion. They should not take it lightly. It's a very powerful religion. He denounced Holy Prophet Salaam. He used abusive language about him. But again, he claimed that the Catholic Church cannot uh, uh, destroy Islam. He is the person who is going to completely annihilate Islam and all the Muslims will be dead. He had everything, power, wealth, health, and a large community. Yet his downfall was just about to begin. The echoes of his hate and challenges had reached a far off town. From Zion to Qadian. Inni saduqum muslihum mutaraddimu Sammum mu'adati wa silmi aslamu Little did Dawi know, his challenges and claims had reached the real Messiah and second coming of Jesus, all the way in Gadian, India, a little known town at the time. And Hazrat Masih Mawda have no idea how he's keeping track of it in that tiny hamlet of Qadian in the pre-Google, pre-internet, pre-aeroplane era. It just baffles my mind. He very carefully and pleasantly told him, refrain from it. But he didn't refrain. He carried on his uh, clumsy accusations. Hazur says that a couple of his writings have come across me, where he is cursing all Muslims. He wants death upon all Muslims. And he is abusing the holy name of Hazrat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that Masih Ahmad Alayhi Wasallam says, I stand for all the Muslims. And Hazrat Masih Wasallam being a lover of Holy Prophet Wasallam, so much so that he would give his life for it, began to address him a little strip sharply. He had enraged the Lion of Allah, for he laid curses upon the beauty of Islam and its holy founder. The lover of Muhammad, peace be upon him, could not stay quiet any longer. The gist of my mubahala was that Islam is the true faith and the Christian doctrine is false. And I am the same Messiah from God who was to come in the latter days and was promised in the scriptures of the prophets. I also wrote that Dr. Dawi was false in his claim of prophethood as well as in his doctrine of Trinity and that if he accepted the mubahala he would die within my lifetime in great pain and misery. Even if he did not accept the challenge, he would still not be able to escape divine punishment. When you are talking about mubahila in spiritual terms, essentially you're saying, my source of strength is God. In wars, you will see small countries getting supported by superpowers. Here, the superpower is Allah, because the conditions of mubahila cannot be controlled by a person.
before Christianity, there were two prophets which have been mentioned to have a prayer duel. Jeremiah was one of them in the Bible and uh, uh, Elijah. Same course was adopted by Holy Prophet Salas. When the Christians from Najran came and he gave them uh, the teachings of Islam and asked them to denounce the Trinity of God and uphold the unity of God, they did not pay attention. At that time, the verse of Mubahila was revealed. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْا فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْا نَدَعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ and that's what leaders do. You think of any story with a hero. Who's the hero? The one who's going to walk in front of danger. Hazrat Masim Adalai walks in front of these millions, hundreds of millions of Muslims and says, you come after me. You claim to be divinely guided. I claim to be divinely guided. So let's have a prayer duel. The challenge was thrown that you have to pray to your God. And I'm praying to my God that that person who is false and wrong should die in the life of the other person. He also says the death will occur by disease, lightning or snake bite. He goes to that level of specificity. And the amazing thing was that Hazrat Masih Maud was like 12 years older than him. So you can imagine an older person telling a younger person that you pray who dies in the life of the other person. Hazrat Masih Madalai Salatu Waslam also says this in Nazul, Nazul Masih in Haqiqatul Wahi. Hazur says, I recognize that I'm 10 or 20 years older than him. And I recognize that he's healthy and I have diabetes and I have other ailments. But this is a decision that's going to be made by God. There is no worldly force here. The promised Messiah's challenge had now become widely publicized across the U.S. and Europe, the world had now taken notice. Dawi intensified his hateful rhetoric against Islam and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. He, first of all, he just didn't reply at all. But later on, when the pressure was that you have to say something to this man. And finally, Dawi is frustrated because the letter is now getting published in newspapers. Newspapers are picking it up. Once again, we have no idea. This was the divine hand that how Allah Ta'ala wanted to use Dawi as a catalyst for the message of Masih Allah Wasallam. Dawi was the claimant of being Elijah and claimed to be the harbinger to the second coming of Jesus. Though he was a false claimant, yet God made him a sign to spread the message of the real Messiah to the farthest corners of the earth. Countless newspapers around the world, advertised it. 32 such clippings uh, Huzur al Islam received in Qadiyan. He named them, he published their excerpts in his book, Wahaqiqatul Wahi. Will Dawi come out for this contest? Prayer duel between Christianity and Islam. Mubahala between two claimants of prophethood. And he said in that Haqiqatul Wahi, that there are hundreds more. Right now we have received only these 32. A time will come when they will be in hundreds. Lo and behold, that prophecy has come to fruition as well. Today we have gathered 166 clippings around the world. One needs to realize that newspapers were the social media of the time. There were the news networks. And we see really, really catching titles like John Alexander Dowie, now has a rival in India. Ghulam versus Dawi. New way of determining true creeds from false. Ahmad's challenge is much like that of Elijah to the priests. 
and whether the founder of Zion, Illinois, is in error as to his own identity will be determined. A Messiah in India The War of the Prophets the Indian Prophet's name is Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, commonly called Mirza Sahib. One cannot but fear that we are going to lose our only dawi. And the U.S. newspapers actually say that the Mohammedan, these are the words of New York Times, the Mohammedan is generous rather than fair because he's more than 10 years older than dawi. He lives in a place where 673 people died of snake bite last year compared to zero snake bite deaths in Cook County and where the risk of disease and mortality is way higher than Chicago. So they are making this comparison that from a worldly standpoint, there is no chance for this claimant in India to win, but that's the power of Mubaila. And then after some time and he was very insultive to the Prophet Messiah, salam, salam, because news people uh, uh, in America picked up this news that this man is advising him. He said about Prophet Messiah, salam, you believe or you think that I'm going to respond to these gnats and flies? I can put my foot over them and crush them out. If I am not God's prophet, there is none on God's earth that is. And this was the moment where essentially challenge accepted. Do you realize that the same words flew back on his face? And it was in front of thousands of people. His fate, his zero hour began. And he actually has to be dragged off the stage because he gets his first stroke in front of thousands of people. It, I have to repeat, it baffles my mind how Hazur was so much on top of this news at a time when a letter would take weeks before it could reach, or a newspaper before it could reach from North America to Qadian. And Hazur says that he is now suffering from a stroke. Look at the irony. This man claims to be a healer. This man's periodical is named Leaves of Healing. He can't heal himself because this is a stroke. Played by God's hand. Nishan ko dekh kar inkar kab tak peesh jayega Aare ik aur jhuto par and from there on, it's not just disease. When he moves to Mexico, then other things start surfacing. His other scandals with young women in the area. Not only that, he had given thousands of dollars as a gift to those women. So that brought a kind of defame on him. The fact that he's a hidden alcoholic, all those things start popping up. Then, of course, they had to take some action and they just uh, disqualified him to be their leader. And later on, after a little time, he had another stroke. And that made him so weak that he couldn't even lay down and speak. February 20th, 1907. Azu talks about Alexander Dawi, and he says, God has now revealed to me Fateh Azim, that a grand victory is coming. And that sign will come from God, will occur, and it will not be limited to only India. It will be a worldwide sign. Hazur uses those words, Fateh Azim. And not only that Hazur uses it, you must see in the book, they are published as if it's the headline of a newspaper. They're not buried somewhere in the text. And then within approximately two weeks, John Alexander Dowie dies. Good. 
दिलों में इस निशा से इस्तकामत आने वाले Great is Mirza Ghulam Ahmad the Messiah foretold pathetic end of Dawi and now predicts plague flood and earthquake Dawi dies in the city he planned death finds him with no relatives or friends by his side Over the decades the Jamaat has made efforts to keep this great sign alive Ahmadi Muslims from neighboring cities moved to the town and established a jamaat with a local mission house to serve their needs. At the turn of the millennium, when the anticipation of the return of Jesus peace be upon him again reached society's attention, the USA Jamaat arranged a special conference near Zion known as Messiah 2000. At that time, the purpose was we held this conference in Carthage college because many years ago 100 years ago john alexander do he spoke in the same hall but all the prophecies of the old testament and the new testament they came to fruition yet no messenger came nearly every objective historian will say that dawi's own ego was the major cause of his fall 1500 people attended that conference as a mmm sab and nine other children of prominent Messiah Islam were present in that conference. The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, received complete victory by God. Now, 115 years later, his message has spread to over 200 countries. And each Ahmadi across the world is a living sign of the greatness and truthfulness of the Messiah of the age. To memorialize this great victory, a brand new mosque has now been constructed, the Fateh Azim Mosque, right here in the town that witnessed Allah the Almighty's grand sign. The residents of Zion, they always wanted to have a mosque in their town. Sardar Mirza Makhoul Ahmed Saab took this as a national project. And he said, we will build a mosque in the city of Zion. The city of Zion being the vital seat of the manifestation of this sign should be remembered and considered live for generations to come. This has uh, been a, a project in the making for the last 20 years, and we're the only Muslim group uh, that uh, sits here in Zion, and the only group that now has a beautiful mosque. The city officials and other church members want to be good neighbors to us. Some of the churches have allowed us to use their parking lot just to show there that they want to be good neighbors. Five million dollars has been spent to construct this mosque, the exhibition center. 1.7 million of that has been raised by Lajna. Amir Saab gave us a target of 1.2 million dollars. And at the time of our Marshals Ashura, there were approximately 26 sisters who stepped forward immediately, writing checks, pulling cash out of their pockets, taking off their bangos, and making this the first contribution towards the building of this mosque. However, we succeeded our goal and we uh, reached $1.7 million, and this took place within less than one year. This is hallowed ground. For God showed his hand, his sign for his prophet here to be an eternal testament to his greatness and as a sign of the truthfulness of the Messiah of the age, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadiyan, peace be upon him. The fact that Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasir al-Aziz now names this masjid Masjid Fateh Azim. If that doesn't give people goosebumps, I don't know what will. Ghulam Ahmad ki jai. Long live Hazrat Ahmad. Bande do siron par hote hain ghalib. Meri khatir 
خدا سے یہ علامت آنے والی ہے میرے خاطر خدا سے یہ علامت آنے والی ہے